Welcome to Strip Coverlet. I'm Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here for a bit of variety hour. A bit of variety. A bit of variety. That's all I really got. I don't really know what the hell we're talking about this variety hour, but I've moved on from the coffee. I've started drinking these large cold energy drinks. Yeah. My heart's going to fucking explode. You know that, right? Oh, yeah. And mm. I'm going to inherit all of the books. Yeah, you're going to keep like two of them, but you're going to inherit them all. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start leaving little notes in my books just in case, you know, you get a hold of them. Just have little scribbles. <laughs> like, you want to pick one page to write a letter to Adrian. And eventually you might get it. It's going to be like uh, page 67 of Twilight. So you're never going to find well, it. It'll be page 67 of some John Green novel that will have made it into the fire before I even touch it. What's old John Green I doing? I will just shovel them into... He dropped one last year, didn't he? Turtles uh, all the Turtles way down. Turtles all the way down, one? yes. Well, we should read that. I've got it. No, we shouldn't. I'm going to sneeze. I want you to know that. Please talk. So Dalton's gonna <laughs> sne- Dalton continues to sneeze in French. Thank you. And um, that is the most manly thing he's done <sighs> today. I feel better about myself. Uh, no, I, I've got Turtles all the way down, and I've actually, I haven't read it. It's the only John Green I haven't read. I uh, bought it from Megan. She read it. She said it was okay. Uh, not the best. So I should read that. Yeah. I don't know where I'm going with this, except the fact that I should read it, because it's How a John Green novel. How long is it? It's, it's a couple hundred pages. Yeah, 200, 250. Yeah, I don't, think it's, I don't think it's a 300 pager. No, no, it's not big by any means. It's a standard John Green length. Let us know if you want us to work it in on the channel. Uh, we will content, We will consider smashing it, but I don't want to read it. I just realized I look like a psychopath when I just smile and start shaking my head like, yes, more John Green. Yeah. It's good for us. Yeah, the beard doesn't do you any favors in that. I department. need to trim the beard because like, okay, so like, I, I don't understand how people groom their beards. Like, you ever go to somebody who has a nice beard, it's nice and well-kempt? Yeah. I don't get it, man. There's no good way to do it. If I try to, like, even it, I just, I'm going to take a chunk out. Uh, but it needs to be done because I am starting to look homeless. Somebody actually commented on one of our Variety Hours a while back. They're like, you need a nap and a shower. Well, how did they know you needed a shower? Thank you. I do need a nap, but I, I, I shower daily. Do I look homeless at this point? Do I look like I, I need a shower? Do I look unkempt? Dalton, is this a genuine question? Do you yes. want me to answer this when yes. people can hear? Yes. Your hair, facial, eyebrow, head, is so wily that there's nothing you can fucking do and look like you've had a shower this week. It's very fair. I feel like I'm just going to take my hair down at this point and just like kind of let it go because uh, it's not that bad. It's just, uh, it's just a thing. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Nah, I'm okay with it. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So I started this new job, right? And like, you know, I uh, got my little cubicle, got the people I don't know sitting around me in the yeah. adjoining cubicles. Like, we all share a little space. And like, at one point, my hair comes up. There's a guy who just calls me Man Bun. Like, he refuses to ner- learn my name. He's like, I'm just going to call you Man Bun. I'm like, oh, I'm probably not going to talk to you, but okay. Uh, and somebody turns around, like, how do you get your hair to do that? I'm like, oh, he just does. Like, I, I don't do anything to it. I took to blow drying it not long ago, but like, you can't tell the difference. Yeah. But you're welcome. Uh, I get questions about the curls. I get curl. I've got curly hair. People always ask me how I curl my hair. Oh, really? You, have, you, have, <laughs> you think you I have curly do hair? This? Really? Really? Well, not not frizzy hair, Dalton. Mm. Let's 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 be. There's a difference. I have curls in my hair. People think I do it on purpose. I look like I touch an electric fence, and it's just not good. Yeah. But you know, whatever. I, I'm about it. I rock it. I keep it my own. I'm gonna rock the part for the rest of this show because it makes you happy as a person. I like it parted to one side, not nah, down the middle. Not down the middle? No. I realize I'm wholeheartedly using your uh, window as a mirror, because I don't know if you own a mirror. There's one in the bathroom. That comes with the bathroom. Yeah. Like, most people usually buy a mirror and put it up somewhere, or a clock, no. or something. No. I want to buy you a decoration one of these days. I got books and cans of soup. <laughs> I, got, I got paintings. You do have paintings. We should go garage sailing. What are we going to buy at garage sales? I usually buy books at garage sales. It would work but, well like, on Bantam. We could go garage sailing. We'll do it. Garage sailing. Yeah. I had an idea for Bantam the other day. I said we should... A link to Bantam will be found in the description below. It is our vlog... Proposed vlog channel. <laughs> proposed vlog channel that we do from time to time. No, I had an idea for Bantam the other day. I realize I'm just going to change bad hairstyles throughout now. And God, it was so good. I'm like, oh, he'll never do that. But we should do that. I do think that's remember? what we have to get to. No. No, I don't. <laughs> I think we have to get to that point, though. We have to take uh, Adrian, and we have to take Dalton for that, and put them in uncomfortable situations. Yeah. 
Uh, and I think we're going to have very different uncomfortable situations. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, one of my ideas would be having a show where we dress each other. Oh, God. Like, not physically dress each other. Like, I don't mean that. Like, but dress each other with, like, purpose as I think this would look good on you or you're mine and I'm going to put these on you and you're going to live like this. The second one freaks me out. Oh, okay. Because, yeah. like, it's like a thrift store type thing. You go to the thrift store with 20 bucks and you have to come out with an outfit. That's dangerous. Yeah. Because you're just going to buy something I'm probably going to wear anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what you mean by that. My wardrobe is horrible. So something that you're going to have to wear anyway, because it's going to come up in rotation. Uh, yeah, no, that's the thing. Like you're going to buy and be like, "Oh my god, this looks terrible," and I'm going to put it on and be like, "That's a Tuesday outfit yeah, right there." Is what that is. That ain't bad. I, uh, I'm kind of like a cartoon character. Okay. Like you open my closet and it slacks and button ups. <laughs> <laughs> he just wears the same thing yeah. every single day. Uh, uh, no, I look like uh, the '60s threw up. Something. I don't know. You look like you look like the sixties threw up the seventies. Maybe. Maybe. I realize that I have blue carpet throughout my house and like I, I know it's blue. Like I've lived there for four years. I realized that was a seventies thing. Yeah. And like I then realized my carpet's probably older than I am. Yeah. And now I gotta replace the carpet. The carpet's older than I am. I, I need to replace the carpet. It's terrifying. But anyway, speaking of the sixties, I know I will do it that we have to do. What's that? And I know you're gonna tell me no. But do you know what's coming up next year? The 20s? The 50th anniversary of Woodstock. And they are having Woodstock in the original location again with uh, modern bands. Yeah. But just as big. Half a million people expected in one area for a concert. We have to go. We have to go. I'm going without you. You're going to have to go without I me. don't care. I have to go. I have to be at Woodstock. Okay. Like, I wasn't there in 69, obviously. I didn't make it for the 25-year reunion, but the 50, I'm going to be there. And I hope there's one guy who was actually there in 69 who's just like, he never really left. Like, he started hitchhiking. His van didn't start. But then he went back, and he just never left. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I, I think that would be phenomenal. I hope it's decent music. Uh, but regardless, that's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. I, yeah. I would like to be there. If you can get it crowdfunded. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not paying for it, I'll tell you that much. Send Adrian Woodstock. Um, <laughs> I bet that's a pricey ticket, honestly. But no! Oh, yeah, I guarantee no, I, it. It's got to be reasonable. Pushing a uh, half a million people into a space like that, I, I would imagine it's going to be reasonable as compared to other uh, massive festivals. I doubt it. You think so? I bet it. Especially, oh, if you're already talking about it being the 50-year, how many people are? Okay. You know what I mean? Okay. Like, it is going to be, it, that is not going to be cheap. I still want to go. So bad. You keep, you keep getting text messages. Do I? Is that unnatural for you to have people text you? Yeah. It's pretty Well, normal. you were talking earlier about something else that's unnatural. There's people at your house. Okay. It's normal for me to have people at my house when I'm not there. And I'm not saying my roommate. I'm not saying my significant other. Strangers. I, I kind of run an open door policy. I am the glorious Steinem of this relationship. People show up at my house all the time and just kind of exist, and sometimes they go away and sometimes they stay longer than they should. Weirds me out. Multiple times in my life, twice now, large parties have been thrown in my home that I wasn't invited to. What? Yes. So I went away to Colorado once, had a nice vacation. We've talked a little bit about that on Variety Hour. Uh, and I had asked somebody to donk sit for me. And uh, I got a text message uh, from a co-worker uh, who I normally don't have over at the home, which, you know, he's been there once or twice. And he says, hey, uh, I just, I woke up on your couch and, like, it took me a second to, you know, come to and then I realized it's your couch, it's your house. Uh, where are you? I'm in fucking Colorado. I am two states away. I am a 12-hour drive away from my home. Why are you there? Did you have too much and just let yourself in? Because that's fine. Place to stay. No, there was a big party here last night. I just assume, like, I don't know, you went out and, like, you were coming back. No! Knew nothing about it. The second time, I had gone to Kansas City, and my friends knew I was going to be in Kansas City all night. So I get a Snapchat with 30 to 40 people shoulder to shoulder in my dining room having a huge party that I wasn't invited to. Your dining room looks like the Last Supper. 
It does. And you're already gone. Yes. So we finish up in Kansas City. I book it back because I'm like, huge party in my house. Got to get there. The minute I come home, everybody leaves. And they take all the booze with them. Party's over, man. Half of which was presumably yours. Yeah, I would assume it's just stolen. But yeah, this is a thing. People throw parties in my house. I have people over right now enjoying a couple cocktails. I am not there. And they keep texting me and they're like, so you coming home anytime soon? I'm like, I'm, I'm busy. You knew I wasn't going to be home. That is so weird an idea. See, I live in an apartment. And even people in my apartment complex refer to my apartment as the dark space. Yeah. So it's, it's like, we don't we go don't there. Nobody does up there. Yeah. But it's, it's just weird. And like how I always get uh, everyone's packages. Yep. Because my apartment has the same address as the building. Yeah, your apartment number is the same as the address. Yeah, so people yeah. just deliver pa- And last time I went and paid a rent, um, the landlady was like, so... People were afraid to go on your porch and get their packages. <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? And she goes, well, they just want to know, is, is it okay? Yeah, it's okay. What do you mean, is it okay? They were just, um, they were worried. <laughs> Which, honestly, I mean, I would be too to That's go on fair. someone else's That's porch, a stranger's and, porch and, and s- look at their mail. Yeah, you know. That's understandable. Uh, but I the day I open the door in my underwear with a machete, <laughs> I will be legend. I am legend. I don't know if I mentioned this story uh, before, but it does definitely tie into my open door policy in my home. I uh, used to work night shift, we know that. And I came home one morning, and there was a stranger on my couch. Have I mentioned this? No, not to me. Okay. No big deal. I assume uh, he's one of my roommate's friends. He's Josh's friend. Maybe they had a drink and he just stayed. Whatever. Very polite. Shuffle to my bedroom. No problem. Wake up, he's gone. Go to work the next night. Come home. He's back, and he's sleeping on the couch. So I'm a little concerned now. I'm a little or concerned. you're wanting rent. See, some vagabond has let themselves in and is nesting in my own home. But a uh, benefit of the doubt. What's two nights? Rinse and repeat. The third time, I come home the third morning, and he's sleeping on my couch again. And I don't know who the hell this kid is. So natural, passive-aggressive Dalton, I start vacuuming. Because I am your mother. And I vacuum right next to the couch until he wakes up. And I'm like, good morning. And he just kind of looks at me. He's like, hi. I'm like, who the fuck are you? And he tells me his name like, I don't know who you are. He's like, I don't know who you are. I'm like, this is my house. Why are you here? He's like, oh, well, Josh invited me over and I've just been sleeping on the couch. I'm like, okay, you gots to go, man. You gots to go. You sleep. That's fine. But then you gots to go. I don't know you. You've been here for three days. You gots to go. But this is normal. Perfectly normal behavior. Doesn't bother me. No. Um, If I walk in and there's someone sleeping... I don't have a couch. You don't have a couch. So if there's someone sleeping on my weight bench, (laughs) they're going to be lucky to wake up. Okay. It's a very normal thing. When I come home, I don't know who's going to be there. It's a surprise. Yeah, I... So one time, um, apparently there's some place around here that delivers pizza at fucking 2 in the morning. Me being me, even before I was on overnights, I was up at 2 in the morning. Okay. So I'm up at my desk writing, and it's 2 o'clock in the morning. There's a knock on the door. That's concerning. Yeah. So the, the thing I, the first thing that comes to my mind is, this person, if I don't answer, is getting in. Okay. Because it's two in the morning. And it's the only reason they'd be knocking. The door. Yeah. They're coming in one way yeah. or another. So I grab one of my machetes. And I open. I don't. I don't peek. Because there's no chain latch. So I don't peek. In one fail swoop, I unlock the door and swing it open. And I've got the machete out. And it's a delivery girl. With a pizza in her hand. And I imagine uh, human feces in her pants. <laughs> because the way she looks The look at me, of death in her eyes. Yeah, which absolutely what I was going for. Well, you, honestly, <laughs> you know, it, it, yes. Yeah. Um, I know you, and if I open a door and you're just there with a machete, I'm terrified. Yeah, but why are you... Why are you... Who... Del- you better make sure you got the right address if you're delivering pizzas true, at 2 true. in the morning. Now, albeit... It was probably one of the only apartments in the complex with a light on at 2 in the morning. That's fair. But still, 
you don't accidentally knock on the wrong door at two in the morning. I am that guy, if I go to someone's house, they can text me the address and they're like, oh, my car's out front, it's the white car, this is the number on the house. When I pull up, I will text you, you. Yeah. And be like, hey, am I at the right one? Because I'm not knocking on a stranger's yeah. door. No. So uh, in my home, we don't use the front door, that makes no goddamn sense, but it's his thing. Actually, one of our couches is in front of the door, so it doesn't open. We keep it shut at all times. Everybody goes to the back and there's a huge deck in the back and you just come in through the back door. Very homey. Uh, if there's a knock at my front door, it obviously means I don't know who's there. So I always get the concern. And I don't know why, but anytime somebody knocks on my door, I start to panic. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Something's gone wrong. It's the police. Something's happened. Uh, no, it's always just uh, somebody who's uh, passing Bible pamphlets. Or uh, I had somebody once knock on my front door and ask to buy my car. And I said, what? No, it's not for sale. And in his meth-induced state, tries to convince me he's going to give me money for my car, let me in. No, get the fuck out. Yeah. I have to go into, like, hulky Dalton mode. Like, I no, go bet you, on. Bet you wish you had a machete then, huh? No. No, I don't. I uh, get blood all over the nice blue carpet. <laughs> it, it doesn't contrast well. It becomes purple carpet. Yeah, because, hey, I love that's purple your, carpet. That's your favorite color. I could go with that. I, I like purple. I'm a green man. Though. You're a green man. I'm a green man. Um, so... With my address problem and working overnights, there are lots of times where someone comes to my door and I'm just not in the mood. True. So one time, for example, there was um, a kid who was obviously peddling religion, mm -hmm. uh, white button-up shirt, black tie, was there with his father, um, didn't go well for them. <laughs> Fair. That's what I'll say. Um, but there's not much story out of it. Another time... A girl knocked on my door and she was trying to talk to me about some proposition to vote on. Yeah. Bada, 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 bada. So I open the door and I'm standing there and I, I'm, I'm in shorts and that's it. You know what I mean? Yeah. And she's talking to me and I don't know what look I was giving her because most, a lot of, not everybody's made to go door to door. You know what true. I mean? Very so true. a lot of times when someone is going door to door, they start talking without eye contact and they eventually make eye contact, right? It, it's a nervous sort of thing. Um, by the time she got up to eye contact, she goes, I'm here to talk to you about propositions such and such. I was wondering if maybe... No? No. <laughs> <laughs> and I went... And I closed the door. <laughs> so, okay. So when I was working overnight, uh, so my front door, there's a, a big porch. You have to go up the stairs. Here's the front door. And here's my bedroom window uh, right off of the porch. Uh, so if somebody's coming up the, uh, to the front door, I hear you. Yeah. Uh, and if I'm working overnights at the middle of the day, you're going to wake me up. But in order for me to get there, I have to wake up. I have to throw some clothes on. I have to go through the entirety of the house, go out the back, walk down the walkway, and stare up at you while you're at my front door. Like, what do you want? And, like, I don't know why this sticks with me. And to this day, it still bothers me. Uh, a woman showed up. I heard her knock. I peeked out the window. And I'm like, all right, I'll go see. And by the time I got there, she was leaving. And she was getting in her car. And I don't know what she wanted. But to this day, it still bothers me that it was important. So if you knocked on my door, I would like to know. Because I don't know what the hell I missed. I assume I had won the lottery. And that was my check. And I missed it. But I will always get up. Always get up and answer yeah. the door. No matter what. I've stopped. I, 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 I ignore no. it now. And if, it, if it's someone peddling religion, I'm always very polite to them. I, I don't know why. Uh, but it, it, it's not their fault they believe silly things. I, I'm usually very polite. I usually offer them something to drink, honestly. Because it's like 110 degrees and you're wearing a suit. Oh, uh, you want some whiskey? Yeah. <laughs> and we got the blood of Christ <laughs> back here. Would you like the blood of Christ? I've, I've got some lamb's blood in the back. I it's don't know. delicious. <laughs> we just slaughtered a chicken. We're doing voices again. Apparently so. But no, it, I, I don't know. It, it's weird. And I, I've just never gotten comfortable with a stranger's knocking on my door. It always sends me into a complete panic. So they just need to come in. If you come in and make yourself at home, we're fine. I assume you're supposed to be there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's just the way that I live. And people seem to think it's ridiculous. But it doesn't bother me. Yeah, it's a strange... It is a strange character quirk to be all right with people in your living quarters. Yeah. And, like, honestly, uh, 
it doesn't matter who you invite over. Most people have the uh, the common sense. You know, don't go into someone's bedroom. Uh, don't mess with their things. Even honestly, strangers you invite into your house will do the same. They will not bother your things for the most part. Uh, but no, I, I've gone to bars before, and like as things were closing up, I'm like, hey, we're going back to my house. Everybody, we're going to my house. Here's the address. The door's unlocked. Never had a problem. So I, I, you know of. I mean, I know who knows of. what people are stealing from you? You just never notice. I've always said if someone tries to steal from me, I'm just going to help them carry out whatever yeah. they want. I'm like, you want the TV? Let me give you a hand. Don't stab me, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get out of here. But you know, it, it's fine. It's I whatever. Just, in my mind, when Dalton realizes something is missing, the first place he looks is in the beard. <laughs> <laughs> just try to figure it out what's oh, in there. Oh man, where's my Harry Potter? Is it? Nope. Nope. Oh, yeah. damn it. <laughs> so I, I had a buddy. I, I can't say a friend because I didn't know him incredibly well. I used to do trivia with him. His name was Steve. Uh, and just this scrawny ginger guy. Uh, kind of bizarre. Kind of just awkward. Had a phone from like 1995 that like he still used and swore by. Uh, he, he came over one day and I'm like, hey, you know, I, I'm going to work. Uh, there's still some people here. Make yourself at home, Steve, whatever. And boy, did he. Because when I came home at 7 o'clock the next morning, there's people sleeping on the couches, whatever. I open my bedroom door, and there's Steve sitting on my bed watching my TV. That is the only time I've been uncomfortable. Because I'm like, no, this, this, is, this is where you don't go. This is my room. He's like, well, everybody went to bed, so I figured I'd just go watch some TV. I'm like, no. I am so uncomfortable with all of this right now. <laughs> That's my life. Yeah, so th there is a difference. There, there absolutely is. A difference. is. There absolutely uh, there's is. a little bit of a difference in, in, in letting someone into your living quarters and letting someone into where you sleep. True. Very true. I wonder where that line is. No one enters that room that, except me. Did you have a significant other at the time? Yes. Yes, I did, but she also worked overnights. Mm. Uh, and I, actually, I don't believe at that time she was living with me, so okay. uh, it was even more disturbing to come home and find Steve watching TV. No, that would be, it would definitely be more disturbing to come home and find Steve watching TV with your significant other asleep in bed. Yeah, fair. That's fair a much statement. Worse story. That's a completely different scenario. That's a much worse story. That's concern. <laughs> fair. Very fair. Uh, but no, it, it, it's always been a thing. And like, uh, it, it seems weird as I like, uh, get older and like, all my friends have jobs and responsibilities. Uh, it, it still is always like, well, we're all going to get together and make horrible life choices, so we better all go to Dalton's house. <laughs> it's fine. I'm like, ah, well, whatever. Yeah. Come on over. Make it happen. Did you have people over a lot when you were a kid? Um, not really. Like, if we're talking about, like, my parents, no. No. Uh, quite honestly, I don't think I ever saw them have their friends over. No, I mean, like, when you were a kid, did you have your friends over? Did yeah. you have birthday parties and things? No, I did have birthday parties in my home, but, like, wholeheartedly, even in high school, I did the same thing. I yeah. collected people. Yeah. Uh, I'd have friends, and, like, they'd come over, and they just kind of live there and never leave. Uh, and my parents were kind of okay with it. There were always people in my home. So, like, this has been a, a trope of mine since high school. Yeah. Like, I, I don't know. I'm much better around people. So I just leave the door open. Whoever wanders in, we'll make friends with them. My childhood was a lot different than that. Was it? <laughs> was it? Though? We weren't allowed to have people over. Yeah? I was, yeah. Uh, you know, not, not a great situation. Um, but I think that, obviously, I don't think that. Obviously, that's where my predisposition to having people over comes from. Okay. And see, you know what? I've thought about it before. Uh, when I was six, seven, uh, that's when my mother was diagnosed with MS. Uh, so they you know, had this big plan. They were going to build this uh, log cabin out in the country, uh, do all these great things. They scrapped it all uh, and started doing some vacation things because they didn't know, honestly, how long she was going to live. Yeah, that's the so, scary part with that disease. Let's take all the money that we had saved to do this, this life thing and let's just uh, do everything you want, whatever you want. So honestly, every weekend my parents would go out. Uh, they'd go out to do something. They'd go listen to their friend's band or there'd be some party they were going to. This was a normal thing because... I mean, shit, fit it all in in a lifetime. Yeah. So I, I think that's maybe where I developed it. I mean, I, I, I'm very comfortable around people, and every weekend, is, it's something. We've got to do something this weekend. And it's, it's weird. Everyone, even, even myself, I like to tell myself I moved out of that house and immediately became my own person. But there are so many small things embedded in your personality from your childhood True. that you don't, you don't override. You might change, right? The reason I don't have people over is because I'm always doing something. I don't want to have someone over while I'm writing, right? But 
the point remains that I don't have people over. Okay. Right? Now, see, I always have people over, so I don't have to be doing anything. <laughs> if I have people over, I don't have to be writing, so it's yeah. wonderful. Uh, but no, it, that's absolutely true. Uh, do you do, uh, like, uh, I'm going to assume I know the answer to this. Uh, do you pay your bills automatically, set up the automatic payments? And no, that? I don't. Yeah, neither do I. I sit down at my dining room table, not my desk, my dining room table, take my glasses off so I can't see a goddamn thing, and write my checks. Yeah. And everyone makes fun of me, but that's exactly what my father did. He took his glasses off, he wrote the checks, he paid the bills. So I associate when I pay the bills to do that. Which is interesting because that is counter to what one would imagine Dalton to do. One would imagine Dalton's always behind on bills, right? Yeah. One would imagine Adrian is always on point with bills, paid a couple months ahead. Polar opposites. I do. My parents, my mother was always, oh God, oh God, please tell me the light company didn't send the, <laughs> right, didn't send it this month. Tell me that it's their mistake. Open the mailbox, shit, right? So I've, I'm in the position I can pay my electric bill. Yeah. My electric bill is 20 bucks a month. It's four months expired right now. <laughs> like it's just it just piles up because that, they don't that shut is, it off because they assume they're not using <laughs> <any> electricity. <laughs> Basically, they assume that all the electricity I use is the. Uh, they probably send my bill to the head, head headquarters because they assume that you know when someone's not living there, you have to keep a, a yeah. minimum amount. Yeah, so the, the refrigerator in the place has to run and the air conditioning runs. So it the, drives me yeah. nuts. I have never missed a payment on anything. I am horrible about that. And like it, as soon as I get the bill. Uh, I know what day I pay them, and they will all be paid that day. Yeah. I sit down, I do the budgeting, I do the bill. Done. Which Twice is, a month. But that is counterintuitive to anyone who's ever watched this show would think, right? Yeah. They think Adrian's got the bills paid two months ahead, and Dalton's the one saying, oh, man, do we pay electric this month? Nope. No. It's i got to keep the power on. Where, where's everybody going <laughs> to sleep? <laughs> Where will the homeless people Exactly. Stay? I am having half the town of St. Joseph <laughs> live with me. i got to keep the bills going. Yeah. Uh, well, it's interesting, though. You know, little weird little things that you pick up. It's the reason why all, I've got like 30 pairs of shoes right now, which is counterintuitive to how I grew up. I always had one pair of shoes. But to stay with that, all of my pairs of shoes were bought on clearance for $5. Okay. So they're all cheap shoes. You know what I mean? So they all True. add up to the cost of one pair of shoes. She'll kill me for this. Uh, but well, Megan moved in. We got a storage unit just to store. Like, a, we got two beds now. What are we going to do with them? Just the extra stuff. Just until we figure out something. From another person living their life. Yeah. Uh, so she pays the storage unit bill. I take care of everything else. That's me. And it's due on the first. And she's an Adrian. So every month on like the fourth or the fifth, I'm like, so. And I get that. Shut the fuck up. You know the answer. Don't question. I'm like, I'm not going to say anything. But you should probably pay that bill. Just. It bugs the hell out of me. Don't know why, but it does. That is so weird. That, it's insane. That she's even the Adrian in that sense because she's also the motivated one, right? Yep, and we're done. We're done here. We yeah. are done with this conversation. Now, Send this was Variety Hour. And if you like this kind of thing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Give this video a like as well because I'm so tired of this point. I don't know what I just talked I'm about. I'm going to have to remember that anytime I bring up that your significant other and I are the same person, you immediately end things. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Give us a like for this uh, Variety Hour here. And if you would like uh, to help us create more content like this and like some of our reviews here on Strip Cover Lit, there is a link, as always, to our Patreon to be found in the description below. Anyway, I gotta make sure I don't. Do not keep that after credits. Yeah, don't. <laughs> Let's talk about the.